today. More details unravel about the Texas school shooter and Obama links the shooting to the anniversary of the death of George Floyd. We've got all of that and more coming up and it all starts right now. Welcome to the News and Why It Matters. I'm Sarah Gonzalez, today joined by Blaze TV contributor Yaku Bullions, host of The Bottom Line, also Pat Gray, host of Pat Gray Unleashed, which you can, of course, find right here on Blaze TV as well. Uh, so obviously, uh, yesterday spent a lot of time kind of unpacking the details as we knew them yesterday about what happened in uh, Uvalde, Texas. Uh, there has been more, of course, that has come out on uh, what exactly happened, where the breakdown was, mm -hmm. how this guy got in the school to begin with. And uh, we're learning today that police stood by for upward of 40 minutes after the gunman stormed into the elementary school in Uvalde, Texas, and killed, of course, 19 children and two teachers. Uh, and they actually were um, uh, holding parents back, right? So the parents waiting, waiting, waiting. Uh, and finally, one of, the, one of the parents has the idea, hey, let's just rush in because the cops aren't doing anything like they're supposed to. Uh, he, by the way, says he lost his fourth grade daughter, Jacqueline. He says more could have been done. They were unprepared. Uh, the first report of the armed man approaching the elementary school came around 11.30 a.m. and the gunman was killed roughly 90 minutes later. Between 40 minutes and an hour passed between uh, him shooting at the school security officer and him being shot and killed by a tactical border patrol unit. And, you know, as we as we heard on that on the same day, it was a lone border patrol agent who came in and shot him. But um, I saw video. I don't know if you guys saw the video. There is video of the parents trying to mm -hmm. get past the police, trying to yeah. get over there and mm -hmm. the police not letting them. Um, Look, it's uh, it's hard to imagine giving your like we're supposed to disarm, says the left, right? We're supposed to not not purchase firearms. These firearms should not be in the hands of us. It should only be in the hands of trained law enforcement. It's hard to imagine giving your guns to the trained law enforcement officials who stand by and don't do anything. And maybe I'm being mm -hmm. too hard on them mm -hmm. because maybe that wasn't part of their training. All I know is that if that's my job and I have made an oath to protect yeah. and serve my community, I don't give a flying you know what if that is something that I've trained for. I'm going in there to try to save these children. Yeah. Am, I, am I being, is that, is that too harsh? Nope. Sarah, absolutely not. And there's zero excuse. Active shooter is a training that has reverberated mm -hmm. through this country. Yeah. Active shooter training means first on site. Remember, school shooting, waited for the cop, the security guard on site mm -hmm. couldn't move because wait for the police. And since that shooting a number of years ago, active shooter said first one on site. Mm -hmm. Go in, go stop. For police, PD, now, I want to say this. You know we do a lot of work on the border. We have yeah. a case in my company right now where a Border Patrol agent ran one of my staffers over with a car because mm. they, they are defending the wrong people, mm -hmm. the, the illegals coming across. I will tell you this. Crime begets crime. Lawlessness begets lawlessness. You've got no border. The police there are scared stiff. They won't move. They can't frisk. They can't search any illegals. Now they're standing by while children are being mowed down, gunned down for 40 minutes. Sheriff Weber sat in this chair and he told you active shooter situation normally is 90 seconds. Mm -hmm. It's 90 seconds is what the police have to mm -hmm. make a decision. 40 minutes? Mm -hmm. It's half a football game. Right. Yeah, it's insane. It's, it really is. I mean, it's, it's because there's no law on the border. So I blame Mallorcas. <clears throat> I blame Abbott. Not for the shooting, but for the lawlessness on our border. And Uvalde is riddled with cartels. Mm -hmm. I've been in Uvalde. Mm -hmm. Cartels all over the place. And then comes all the questions. Well, it's a very exorbitantly expensive truck the guy's driving. Where is that coming from? The, the guns here, it's $5,000 a piece. And now the conspiracy just runs amok because you go, well, did the cartel hire him or not? But it all comes down to this. There's lawlessness on our border. 
Ranchers can't get out of their homes. Their fences get cut. Their cattle is stolen. And some kid walks into a building while the police holds the parents back. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you this. They would have to shoot me. Yeah, that's w exactly yeah. what I was thinking, you too. You would not stop that's me. No exactly cop stops what I was me. Thinking too. Mm -hmm. Going to my children. Right. Yeah. It's horrifying. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't think they would shoot you. No. I mean, I, I would hope not. But they were actually, it looked to us when we watched the video this morning, like they were holding parents down on the ground. Yes. Yes. And they're screaming. The yes. parents, at Which least one woman. Which is about what you'd have to do to me. More, yeah, I they're mean, cause screaming. Because I'm, I'm not going, I'm not going to, down without Somebody's got to go down I don't this. understand it. I don't understand why they're hanging out for 40 minutes while the guy's inside killing children. I don't understand it. And why uh, Bortec, mm. the, uh, yeah. the border elite group, had to, had to finally come and get there. They got somebody with a key. They didn't. They couldn't even kick the door down. Mm -hmm. uh, for whatever reason, they couldn't get the door open. But you have like a door hammer. It's called the door, door hammer. hammer. We mm -hmm. use door hammers when we rescue Come children. On. You blow mm -hmm. any door open with the door hammer. So pack. finally, somebody comes with a key, opens it up. Border agent goes in and kills a him. A key. Let's get a key, somebody, yeah. while this guy shoots children. Right. A right. key. Right. You could have gotten a key in, in two minutes. Drove the truck through the wall. No, go something. Get the kid. No kidding. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, it, it's just, it's so difficult. I want to get into, uh, you know, yesterday we talked about how the left is obviously using this to push for more gun control, more gun control. It's just so frustrating to hear because it's like mm -hmm. in this and so many other of these, particularly school shootings, Parkland included, mm -hmm. It, like, you don't need more law. There's no law that c would have prevented this. It's actually the bureaucracy of the laws that are currently on the books that are already failing that's causing all of this. So mm -hmm. why in the world would you need more gun laws? You, like, you already have all of these law enforcement officials, all of these bureaucrats who are already failing doing their due diligence. What in the world right. is making it more difficult for us to be able to defend ourselves going to do? Uh, I want to play for you Joe Biden, who, of course, mm. uh, wants to tell us now that uh, the Second Amendment, you guys realize, oh is not actually absolute, according to Joe Biden. Watch. I spent my career... Oh. As chairman of the Judiciary Committee and as vice president, working for common sense gun reforms, as I said, as a senator and a vice president. While they clearly will not prevent every tragedy, we know certain ones will have significant impact and have no negative impact on the Second Amendment. Second Amendment is not absolute. When it was passed, you couldn't own a you couldn't own a it. cannon. Don't say it. You oh couldn't own certain did. kinds of weapons. said it again. He lied again. A cannon. I mean, yeah, you actually could. How yes. many and times is he going to say the lie? <laughs> He's, he loves that, and he loves the deer in Kevlar yes. running yes. through the yeah, forest. deer in yes. Kevlar. So asinine. Yeah. I mean, the deer in Kevlar thing is just so stupid, because it's not about hunting, right. doofus. No. Right. It's not about hunting. And then the the lie that he couldn't order a cannon when, yes, of course they could, and they did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Private citizens did own cannons. Yep. There was nothing wrong with it. No. I mean, I, I don't know. You, you probably own a cannon today. Yeah, you can. I, well, yeah. I, I mean, also. You can it, own a tank. It, yeah. Also, like, the actually, the Second Amendment, I would argue, is one of the amendments that actually is very, very Very clear. absolute. Very absolute. It's very very absolute. clear. It There's really Shall no, not be infringed. There's no Pretty gray absolute. area. There's no That's gray as area absolute there. as it gets, yeah. really. The gray area is if the eyeballs, you're reading it through, says you're above the law, or the lens you're observing our Constitution through that you think, well, it's a piece of paper that you can amend, right? And this is what, what they think of our country. Um, I just, I, I'm sorry, I just got to say one more thing about it. There's, I want people to pause and think for a second. Anybody that did not vote conservative, anybody that thinks the border is, is hyperbole, we're overinflating this stuff. Now will you pay attention? Now will you listen? It's not when you have an open border. It's not just that the border is open. It's a policy. It's a mindset. We're standing at the border. Migrants are coming over. I'm asking DPS or CBP, will you interview them? We can't touch them. We can't interview them. What if there's fentanyl in the back? We can't. Now you got them saying, we can't go in the building. Mm. The moms are hearing mm. gunshots inside. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine? No. I can't I will imagine knock. No. 
I will uh, knock a police officer unconscious. I got to I got to tell you I, and mm-hmm. and I'm coming there with my firearm and I'm saying stop me. But it's their superiors. Sarah, I'm telling you the mandate down from the White House all the way down Mayorkas Mm-hmm. All the way down, they've got these police officers, the, the, the highway patrol guys that's p- patrolling the border for crying out loud. They've got them scared stiff. They're undertrained. They're underqualified. Heck, we were with some, some of them and they didn't have ammo. Mm. They didn't even have ammo wow. on the border. Yeah. This is what, what's happening on our border at the moment. So somebody needs to be held accountable upstream, yeah. upstream. Some of the leadership saying, why is the first response not active shooter training, which is I don't care if you're a janitor. Right. First guy on scene, eliminate the threat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Eliminate the shooter. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, so I want to uh, I want to go to we talked yesterday on the program about just the this lovely uh, Robert Francis O'Rourke, which in honor of him, it is why I'm wearing this shirt today, and uh, which those of you who are listening on audio says, "Don't bet on my Texas." Uh, just the probably the most disgusting, egregious nasty act of political grandstanding, Mm. I think possibly ever, I don't know, certainly Mm -hmm. that I can remember in my lifetime, dancing on uh, 19 dead children whose bodies aren't even cold yet. Uh, We showed it, of course, yesterday. Well, we all knew this, but it's nice to hear from sources like CBS News who came out after uh, he staged his little, uh, you know, scolding of Greg Abbott and see even CBS News, the CBS News reporter was like, yeah, um, I was on the third row and uh, this was definitely staged because he had like placeholders so he could waltz in and come look like the hero for the fringe left, watch. I did see what happened just before the press conference started. I was in the third, uh, third uh, aisle, um, third row on the aisle rather, and there were two people across the aisle from me, and a moment before the press conference started, they got up from their seats when Beto walked in. So they were seat holders for him, and then he sat down. So his presence wasn't really noticed in the 15 or 20 minutes that people were gathering inside because he was not in the room. So this seems something very clearly staged by Beto O'Rourke and his campaign wanting to confront the governor at this moment. Imagine what kind of desperation you must feel as a gubernatorial candidate to think that that's something that you should be doing. Yeah, bad, bad judgment, bad people around you. Yeah. Uh, Your butt's stupid yourself. (laughs) I mean, if you think that's a good idea at a press conference where, and the mayor of Uvalde said, let's not make this political Mm -hmm. at all. He told Abbott that, he told Dan Patrick that. Everybody was instructed, this is my town. This is our press conference. Mm -hmm. I just want the facts released. I don't want it to be political. Then this guy waltzes in and starts in on Abbott. And and so that's one of the reasons the the, uh, mayor of Uvalde went after him so hard and called him a sick son of a bitch, which was really appropriate. Yeah, it really was. And, I mean, you watched that exchange, and I'm like, I don't know. If a fight breaks out, I've still got my money on the guy in the walker. Oh, yeah. Oh. I mean, he, yeah. he has more testosterone. Abbott, Abbott versus O'Rourke? No, Abbott would no, have no, to no, be. No, 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 no. The, oh, the, the walker mayor. Guy. The mayor. Even mm. Abbott in he's the in a, He's in a walker, and I'm like, he looks more. Any one of them. He looks more foreboding yeah. than this flailing arm. Uh, I won't. The swear jar's down here. I don't want yeah, to I, pick I, it up. So I, 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 there's words that comes to mind that I want to use, but I can. This is a scum, low life. You know, yeah. Mm-hmm. SOB. I mean, I, this is a guy who, who, this is the guy that wants to run for governor and would say he's going to secure the border. No, this whole party, everybody he represents, do not care one lick about any American children. They will, mm-hmm. no, they they will have him raped, bastardized, or literally take this, this moment, mm-hmm. the lack of tact, the lack of character. Mm-hmm. I mean, that is low life stuff. Yeah. yeah and, so, and so, okay, <laughs> you know what? As bad as it was for those families... Good that it came out. Good that your true colors were shown. Good mm-hmm. that now we see that, C- that CBS, was that CBS? Yeah. CBS calls you out. I mean, you got to be pretty low, yeah. right? And it's pretty interesting when you think that this was the guy who, during the presidential campaign, mm-hmm. said, hell yes, I'm going to take your AR-15 mm-hmm. and your AK-47. Yeah. Buy them back. Mm-hmm. Now he says, 
I'm not mm -hmm. here to take anybody's no. anything, and all I'm here to do is protect the Second Amendment, because now he's running for Texas governor, right. and he knows he can't win right. on a, I'm going to take your guns platform. The mm -hmm. guy has absolutely no spine. No. He has no values. No. Uh, uh, he goes with the wind where it's the political faker. winds are blowing. No. He's just he's a, a douchebag. Well, uh, just a faker and a douchebag. Yeah, I mean, and all of the things that he has brought up, it's like, again, none of those things would have prevented this particular shooting no. from taking place. No. The, he, right. he, he, he already passed a background check. Like, mm -hmm. he, are, like wh wh yep. what is it that you think that you would be doing other than disarming law-abiding citizens from being able to protect themselves from crazy people like this one? Well, I thought it was very appropriate that uh, Time magazine... Well, look, they corrected it, but <laughs> accidentally, oops, they posted a tweet about uh, Beta. Oh, I'm sorry, it's Beto. Oh, but wait, the first tweet that they wrote said Beta O'Rourke, and they had to correct themselves <laughs> and say the original version of this tweet misspelled Beto O'Rourke's name. It's Beto, not Beta. No, I'm sorry, Time, you had it right the first time. <laughs> Actually, it is better, O'Rourke. Um, all right, we've got more to come, but uh, first we want to thank our sponsor, Patriot Mobile. So, look, we are on a, an under attack, I should say, from all sides. Yaku mentioned the border. Mm -hmm. It's not just the border. It's, you know, all of this wokeism, infiltrating corporations. Everyone wants to tell you that you're racist mm -hmm. if you don't agree with CRT. Uh, free speech, religious liberty, constitutional rights are constantly under attack. Your Second Amendment rights are under attack. Now is the time to partner with companies that believe in the values that you believe in. That is why we support Patriot Mobile. They are America's only Christian conservative wireless provider. It's the same nationwide coverage you're going to get from the other major carriers. So you're going to get the same service plus peace of mind that your money is combating the left's attempts to silence you. They've got plans to fit any budget. They've got 100% U.S.-based customer support. And Patriot Mobile shares your values and supports organizations fighting for things like religious freedom, the sanctity of life, and our veteran and first responder heroes. You can go to patriotmobile.com slash news. Get free activation with the offer code news. That is patriotmobile.com slash news. Uh, just a day after the Uvalde shooting, AOC... Good friend of the program, Alexandria <laughs> Ocasio-Cortez, decided to take to Instagram. And uh, I don't know how she's connecting these two things. Lecture everyone on uh, the big problem with, of course, white supremacy. Watch. White supremacy is a fact. Mm. It's not just a fact. You look at FBI statistics, which underreport hate crimes, Police statistics, which also under even all the institutions that under report hate crimes still has white supremacist groups as by far, by far the leading uh, driving the leading driver of mm. domestic terrorism in the United States. And that's no. with all the generosity that they get from under reporting. <laughs> it's not even close. It's like the bar of white supremacist violence is like this. And then it's like all the other categories are like that. Um, and so it's not inciting anything to talk about that. There's no what ifs here. There's no like, what about Antifa here? What about Antifa here? Uh, pretty sure most of those guys are white if we're just being honest, but uh, I'm having trouble understanding how she's getting to uh, this particular point because she's talking about the shooting, but the, I'm not going to name the shooter because I, I try to make yes, it a point not to, absolutely. But, but he's Hispanic. Definitely a Hispanic male. Definitely the, Hispanic. You, you hear the name and you already know. Not a white supremacist. Not a white no. supremacist. No. Very, very Hispanic, uh, which, you know, she should know. Um, being that she is also Hispanic, but now it always comes down to white supremacy. And I also love how she talks about these statistics. I don't know which ones she's uh, referencing specifically, but they always reference these statistics and they don't take in mind per capita, right? Like they don't, they don't go like, mm -hmm. oh wait, this particular minority only represents this percentage of the mm -hmm. population. So when you, when you look at those statistics, mm -hmm. it's not, quite uh, doesn't shake out the way that they want them to anyway. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try and do a Miss Cortez here. Miss Cortez, <laughs> 
next time quote real numbers and real figures, not hyperbole. You have no numbers. Yes, Chicago is blown to smithereens, black on black crime. That's mm -hmm. white supremacy. Inner Los Angeles, Hispanic crime. That's white supremacy. The hate crimes across this country that she's making up all of a sudden out of nowhere. She's never seen it. She's never tasted it. Look, that, that's another poser. She should marry O'Rourke. Better. Oh. The two of them should go on an island, and the island's called Forgotten. <laughs> that's where they should go live, the <laughs> island of Forgotten. We want to forget that you were ever here. No, look, it's such a, it, it, she's reaching. You can see as she's talking, she's reaching, she's grabbing at straws because she must be relevant in the moment. There's yeah. nothing to add to the conversation of any value. Mm -hmm. I just have to be relevant in a moment. This is, this is a campaign. You know, this is like our own campaign strategy. So, look, I can't listen to that woman. I like when you make fun of her. <laughs> Other than that, I want to vomit over here when she speaks. I do. You did bring up a great point, which is I do love that when she does these live streams, it is like you can see the hamster wheel. Absolutely. The hamster's just Every like time. ferociously yeah. uh, There's no trying no preparation. To spin. There's nothing. Yeah. Yeah. It's just yeah, going on in Show us the graph head. you're talking about. Yes. <laughs> I'd love to see facts. it. And where Let to come from. Yeah. Yeah. Whose numbers are they? Are right. they from the FBI? Right. Are they from Homeland Security? Are they from USA Today? Whose numbers are these and where do they come from? But if you yeah. notice, she don't, won't even quote I've a number. I've never seen numbers like that. No. Never. Well, Not no, in my but entire but there's life. there's no number. Yeah. She's I, just talking right. about a number. Right. I, right. <laughs> but where white supremacy is the biggest oh my gosh. Uh, issue in our country, like the FBI is trying to say right now, I've never seen nonsense. numbers no. to back that up. No. Ever. No. Absolute nonsense. Uh, I think. Probably that's because she, I, you guys are going to be shocked to hear this. She lied. No. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, she lied. Uh, but she's a congressperson. Oh, you, you would think, mm. you would think There'd that they always, yeah, there. they always tell the truth. It turns yeah. out that they don't hear. Huh. Uh, speaking of horrible politicians, Obama, of course, jumped on the opportunity to uh, commemorate the victims of the shooting, but he did it in this really weird way where he uh, related it to, you know, of course, as we know, St. George Floyd, mm -hmm. uh, because it was the one-year anniversary, uh, or the two-year anniversary of his death. So he tweeted out, as we grieve the children God. of Uvalde today, we should take time to recognize the two years have passed since the murder of George Floyd under the knee of a police officer. His killing stays with us all to this day, especially those who loved him. Wow. Uh, what? Unbelievable. I know. <laughs> it, it kind of insinuating that he loved him. Yeah. Did he ever meet George Floyd no. in his life? You know, forget he about whether you love the guy. This is about children. Who, yeah, right. Can you please yeah. just America recognize that these people hate your children? This is the former president of the United States who literally appeared out of obscurity, who was, was made to become the president, is now all of a sudden loving George Floyd and equating the, this massacre of children to, to we need to think about George Floyd again for a second. I mean, golly, man. I'm just glad they're being exposed. All of them being exposed yep. for the poses they really that they are. They, they really are. Th their true colors are starting to show. And I yep. love seeing them unravel, especially the Obamas. You, you got to wonder if, like, did he not know that you can actually tweet more than one tweet per day? <laughs> like, he was just trying to, like, shove it all into one tweet and then hit send as if he couldn't have just done two separate <laughs> tweets throughout the day. They you can't meme, idiot. they can't tweet. <laughs> God, they're bad at this. Uh, speaking of being bad at this, <laughs> one more for you, uh, Joe Biden. <laughs> who uh, he was talking about George Floyd yesterday, and he claimed that all, you know, remember all of those cities that were burned to the ground because of George Floyd's death and there were riots? Yeah. All, well, peaceful. mostly peaceful, mm -hmm. a little fiery, a little, like, deathy. That's peaceful. But mostly peaceful uh, protests. He says that all of those are actually unified, the people in this country, watch. Mm. Two summers ago, in the middle of the pandemic, we saw a protest across the nation, the likes of which you hadn't seen since the 1960s. They unified people of every race and generation. Mm. What? Where did that happen? <laughs> what? <laughs> Where did that happen? I'd love to know. I mean, we're going to a new level of insanity. Oh this kind gosh. of insanity you've never seen in mankind. <laughs> Ever. Like you did not unify me, buddy. You did not unify this table or this network. I can tell you that much. I'm sorry. Did he catch the Kyle Rittenhouse trial? <laughs> 
Did Good he? Night. Did, did was he? Well, I was going to say, was he asleep during that? But he, he may have been. Probably was. Yeah, he may so, have been. Um, all right, we've got uh, we've got more to come. Uh, first, we want to thank our sponsor, Healthy Cell. So, guys, I know those of you who you try to stay healthy. You're maybe one of the 240 million Americans who take your supplements daily in pill form because you're like, well, I know I need my vitamins. You actually are not getting the promised results because you don't absorb the nutrients properly when it is in pill form. There is a new type of dietary supplement that absorbs into your body way better. It's called mm. Healthy Cell. Healthy Cell is this gel uh, that you, you eat. It not only tastes great, but it has 165% more absorption than pills. It uses this microgel technology to deliver maximum absorption. By the way, if you're taking one of those pills, uh, you don't realize it's got a lot of ingredients in it that can really irritate the lining of your stomach. This one is actually packed with a bunch of uh, soluble, ultra-absorbable, nutrient particles made with gut healthy ingredients. It's got fiber, citrus pectin, uh, acacia gum, and water. It doesn't have any artificial sweeteners, flavorings, colorings. It's non-GMO, gluten-free, and vegetarian. You got to go to healthycell.com. They've got one for everything. They've got one for sleep. They've got one for, for your daily uh, vitamins. It tastes great. You can, you can squeeze it in your mouth. You can mix it with water. Do whatever you want with it, but make sure that you get this so you're actually getting the most out of your vitamins. It is Healthy Cell. That's healthy, C-E ll.com use code news for 20% off uh, speaking of George Floyd's death, Joe Biden signed an executive order aimed at reforming federal police practices and establishing a national database of police misconduct uh, yesterday this is he was doing it on the anniversary of George Floyd's death uh, is interesting. He said this executive order is going to deliver the most significant p police reform in decades. It applies directly under law to only 100,000 federal law enforcement officers, all the federal law enforcement officers, and through federal incentives and best practices that are attached to it, we expect the order to have a significant impact on state and local law enforcement agencies as well. Um, and he, of course, faulted Senate Republicans for blocking the bill that was passed in the House that was called the George Floyd Justice in Policing Act. Um, and, the, you know, it's... I don't know, just makes me a little uncomfortable because of all of the databases that they are uh, putting together, because mm -hmm. they are, you know, including all of these things that previously were like things that you would leave up to the states. It just feels a lot like uh, federalizing the police, mm -hmm. um, which makes me uncomfortable. But I do find it interesting mm -hmm. that it's to, to, it is, it's been two years since George Floyd's death. So if these were all things that you guys needed to do and you were just going to sign an executive order, uh, what took you so long would be my question. Yeah. It almost yeah. feels like pandering, but they wouldn't do that. That's not that's no, not the left that's not the left style. They wouldn't so. lie, they wouldn't no, pander, no, they wouldn't please. throw hail marys because there's an election coming in a number of months, uh, you know, they're grabbing at straws. Look, this ties in with actually Obama's tweet from earlier when Obama gets with, with, a, with a man on his chest, so with knees on his Me chest. On his mm -hmm. uh, that was your police protocol in your police academies, President Obama. That's been standard police practice for forever, okay? And, and so, but what we're finding now, some of these policies, I'm, I'm nervous about this, what Biden's talking about. We're seeing it trickle down to Houston. Houston just lowered their standard of, of entry into the academy. And so, yeah, because they can't get any police Lower. officers. Now. And I talked to the chief recruiter. Really? Mm -hmm. There are five thousand, sorry, two thousand police officers short in Houston. Yeah. Two thousand. That's a lot. That's a lot. Jeez. We're five hundred short in Dallas. Now they're lowering the standard of entry, so the type of police officer. I mean, you're going to get Johnny Donut all of a sudden that can't move more than two miles an hour. That's going <laughs> to, you know, Donut. you know. <laughs> Johnny Donut's yeah. been waiting to get on the force exactly. for a long time. Exactly, yeah. The security guard at the, at, the, at, the, at the mall, yeah. Paul Bart, the mall cop, has now all of a sudden become chief of police. Okay, but this is the kind yeah. of stuff that's going to happen because it's gross overreach. Right, right, yeah. right. And, and here I come with my Hail Mary. It's up to the sheriffs. They're the last men standing in this country. The sheriffs are the only ones that you can truly trust. I promise you sheriffs will not hold, have held those parents back. Yeah. No li way. Listen, I, I mean, look, I, I'm a, I'm very, a very firm believer in uh, holding our police accountable because if anyone mm -hmm. is going to, it needs to be the side who supports them, right? Because yeah, you can't yeah. continue to support them if it, the entire, uh, you know, industry mm -hmm. is full of like just rotten people. Um, 
especially with what happened to me with the DPD officer, yes. right? So like I, mm -hmm. I, I know that there are things that need to be done. <laughs> I highly doubt that moving towards federalizing no. all of this no. and creating databases, Bad idea. right, and making the, the federal government more involved in it is going to somehow fix the pro the problem. Yeah, it's it's not. I mean, these extremist Democrats have been trying to do this for years. Mm -hmm. uh, Ob do you remember Obama's civilian police force that was supposed yes. to be just as strong, yeah. just as well funded? Yes as the U.S. military. I mean, he's been trying to get some sort of new force out there, mm -hmm. and Democrats have been trying to do this for a long time. And uh, we just gotta make sure they're unsuccessful doing it. But the police yeah. attrition problem is, is huge it's all big, over the country. Not just Houston, not just Dallas, it's in Chicago. Yeah. We had the stats of Chicago in 2019, how many officers that entered the force and how many left, and it was almost the same, maybe 50 officers difference. Next year, it's about 300 different. Last year, it was about 800 different. That, that mean, left the force just, and you did left, not replenish. Yes. Yeah. Less, yeah. so 800 yeah. less are uh, coming mm -hmm. than going. Mm. Yeah. And it's unacceptable. I mean, who's going to who's going to protect? And then the Chicago crime correlates. The, no, but the crime correlates directly. You of can course. go through the country. Houston, <clears throat> number two human trafficking city, with two thousand officers short. They can't show up. They, they can't yeah, right. be there. They're yeah. overloaded. The guys are quitting the force. Then you got to stack on top of it the defund the police moment, shaming the police officers. Mm -hmm. They still got whiplash from George Floyd for being spat on and cars yeah. set on fire. I wouldn't want to be a police no, officer now. I mean, right, right. No way. It's tough. Well, I mean, I can't imagine why uh, police officers in Chicago are leaving the force. Uh, you've got uh, a man who recently pointed a gun at a news camera while the anchor was reporting on gun violence. Let's watch that. I'm Natalie Bumke with a frightening situation that unfolded this morning while our colleagues were live on the air. Chicago police have issued a community alert about the incident. They are trying to track down the man in these photos. Around 7 o'clock this morning at the corner of Clark and Hubbard, while our reporter was in the middle of a live report about gun violence in Chicago, a man walked up and pointed what appeared to be a firearm at our crew. Right now, police are calling this man a person of interest, accused of aggravated assault with a firearm. If you have any information Jeez. regarding who he is or where he is, please contact Chicago police. Well, I mean, at least Lori Lightfoot is, is focused on the really important things like saying Republicans are going to ban interracial marriage. Yeah, that's good. You know, that's, I mean, how, much, how many times have we talked about that right? being our next step? Right? <laughs> All the time, if I hear heard from Republicans. Once, you've heard it a million Jeez. times from Republicans. Especially, especially yeah. Clarence Thomas. He's the worst. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Look, you, you, remember, you remember, Pat, Sarah's too young. Yeah, too young and too pretty to remember this. <laughs> you remember when... I don't know where you're going with this, but I like you, it. You remember <laughs> when we could say, hey, there's a crazy guy walking around in the street with a gun, so call all the loony bins, someone escaped. Mm -hmm. Or call the ja jail, someone escaped, because they must have escaped some sort of custody. No, now they're just out there. They're mm -hmm. just, they're, they're celebrated. Being crazy the today. The bends our society. Yeah. yeah. Look, if you've got blue or pink or purple hair today, you are the, <laughs> you are the cool cat on the street. And pointing guns at reporters, you know, the, the mental illness of this kid that shot up the school. I don't know if you saw the pictures of him being trans and, and all the, have you seen that stuff? Yeah, I saw though no. that that wasn't him. It wasn't him? No. I was gonna ask, is it true or not? No. No, but there's mental I, I, illness. When you shoot kids up at a school, there's mental illness. Something is very wrong. So the, the, mm -hmm. the, the crazies are running the asylum, and For we're sure. now in asylum. The U.S. is like, the, it's New York from 20 years ago on the street. Yeah. Those guys are now being empowered. Yeah, well, I mean, it's cool to be mentally ill now. Yeah, they don't want to, I mean, they, they're like, we, that's, that shouldn't be stigmatized. That should be celebrated. And this is the result of that. Yep. So, uh, all right, we've got more to come first, we want to thank our sponsor, Manscaped, which is always, I love talking about this with men at the table, because it will make them very uncomfortable, okay? Let's talk about all the grooming you men have to do. Look, I don't have to get nasty with you, okay? Because you guys have all sorts of, you got hair growing out of your ears, and your nose, and all sorts of stuff, and Manscaped offers precision-engineered 
tools for all of that and more. They also just recently launched the Ultimate Men's Hygiene Bundle, the performance package. They've got over 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped. you got to take advantage of this exclusive offer. You will get 20% off and free worldwide shipping with my code SARA, that is spelled S-A-R-A, at manscaped.com. Dot com. Uh, you've got, in this performance package, you've got the Lawn Mower 4.0 trimmer, the Weed Whacker Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer. You've got uh, deodorant for all sorts of places that I'm not going to mention, but you can imagine, and it works. <laughs> you've got a toner. It also comes with a pair of boxer briefs and a travel bag to hold everything, and it is a really good, uh, high-quality travel bag as well. Not that I would know, but my husband does. All right, so uh, look, it's got this uh, cutting-edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents, and uh, it's waterproof and includes a 400K LED spotlight. I mean, look, that is the most precise shave you're ever going to get in your life. Go there, get 20% off and free shipping with my code Sarah at manscaped.com. That is manscaped.com, promo code Sarah. Uh, another liberal city focusing on the real issues at hand, of course, San Francisco, who uh, has now decided the public schools over in San Francisco are dropping the word chief from job titles. <laughs> oh my God, this is, this is literally too. I can't oh, this is bonkers. No. This story. Bonkers. So that they, you know, the words connotation with Native Americans. You can't be a chief executive <laughs> officer no. anymore. No. Chief okay. creative no, officer, you no. cannot. Wow. So they're going to have to come up with a new word. They don't have it yet wow. uh, to replace job title. Like, I mean, it's not just, it's chief technology officer, mm -hmm. yeah. chief of staff. Operating. Yeah. Right. Uh, you, well, chief no. financial officer. They've got a million chiefs. Which, by the way, the word chief actually does not have Native American not roots. <laughs> no, they do this all the time. Oh, my gosh. They do it all the time. It's, uh, I think it's an English word that was borrowed by French uh, chef because it meant leader, and mm -hmm. now they <laughs> so change the whole. Thank goodness, guys. Thank and there's not a single Native American that's ever complained Probably about no. Just like the Washington Redskins could yeah. still have their name. Right, yeah. right. Well, I, but they, but all of the minorities need all of these superior white people to like tell us what we need to be oppressed by, mm -hmm. so that then we can be oppressed by them. Mm -hmm. What would we do without all of these liberal white people telling us all of the ways in which we are oppressed? It, it would be so bad. We'd still have Aunt Jemima. We'd still oh. have Godoya wouldn't be under attack. It would be a very tough world. Yeah, what that would, would be we horrible. Do? How Nobody could go outside their homes anymore. <laughs> Nobody could because you'd have these awful words. Yeah, watch them come up with a term like great poobah or whatever in some other culture. Yeah, that would be going, gone too. Ex excuse me. Now you're really offending somebody. And I mean, it's insane. They did survey after survey, mm -hmm. and 90, 91, 92% of American Indians were not offended by the Redskins. Right. Uh, yeah. They helped make the logo. It was an honor, actually. Yeah. Some of yeah, them defended it was. and said, wait a minute, you're yeah. stripping us from something here. We had a. Right. We, we had a relationship this, to. This actually feels a little bit like white uh, supremacy that you guys are taking all of our like cool things and yeah, replacing right? them yeah. and not allowing us to be that part of be culture. That would be an example. That would be an example of actual <laughs> Right, right. I, it, you know, when it comes to San Francisco, I just don't understand how people even live there anymore. No. Mm. It's It just, it, you pay an insane amount of money For to rent. live there. You can't own anything. You can't own anything. And, I mean, God forbid you step outside your house and try to go somewhere, you get your car broken into. Yeah, You've got to step over human, human feces. Poop. You, no, legitimately. Yeah. I had my kids. We drove from the Redwood Forest, which is incredible, by the way. Yeah, God makes stunning stuff. And we were tracking to, to Yosemite, and we stopped, you know, for like a minute. Mm -hmm. And the second pile... <laughs> My seven-year-old so was like, what's that? And I piles. said, that yeah. is our mm. ticket out of here. You're Back to the car. <laughs> Keep driving. Hold your, your pee. Your seven-year-old said, Daddy, that doesn't look like dog poop. No. <laughs> and it doesn't. So gross. <laughs> and it doesn't. So and they still have the problem, even though they have... They hired a bunch of people to clean that up. You know, yeah. you remember the story? Yes, you know a lot of money. One hundred and ninety thousand dollars a year. <laughs> That's crazy. To clean up human feces. Uh huh. I mean, really, what happens to what happens to California? What happens to places like San Francisco? It, you, I, even the ultra wealthy who still live there in their gated communities have to venture out into the community to go do things. At some point, yeah. How much longer are they going to tolerate this? I don't know. I mean, we stayed, when we went there for the Super Bowl, I can't remember what year it was, 2014 or whenever it was in San Francisco. Um, and we, we rented 
uh, this was Glenn and, and yeah. us and everybody in the blaze at that time. And so we went out there and stayed in Nicholas Cage's house. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's a $15 million house. So this is a really nice right. neighborhood. Uh, yeah. Just across the street were piles of human yeah. poop. Yeah. <laughs> All up and down the Great street. Great for home value. And you walk outside and you smell that, and Ugh. it's like, oh man, <sighs> welcome to San Francisco. Yeah. It's really awful. I remember the last time we were there several years ago, it was when we did a bunch of Daily Wire crossover shows, and um, we, <laughs> we made a, a trip into downtown LA. This was LA, so we made a trip into downtown LA just to, you know, you want to like buy souvenirs for the family and stuff, and as soon as we got out of the car, there was a guy with a crack pipe doing crack. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, Jeez. oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> We're not in Kansas anymore, honey. Well, this broad is daylight. awkward. Yeah, yeah and it's it supposed, was. It was broad daylight. And it's supposed to be celebrated now. This is this is the America that they want, right? They want everybody. It sure is. Yeah, they want everybody stoned out of their mm -hmm. minds so they could rob them blind. And in Texas, we say not so much. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, stop coming here. Stop if, coming here. If you're from California and you believe in those wacky policies, stop coming here. Re okay. California refugees who are our people will take. All right, uh, we can, we got to take a break. We'll be right back. Wow, yeah, and what is it, 1,800 a day mm -hmm. are coming from there? Yes. No. This particular story is just for these gentlemen right here. They thought that they were uncomfortable when I was giving the Manscaped ad. <laughs> they ain't seen nothing yet. There is a new cereal out you guys are going to want to hear about. It is uh, this Swedish oh intimate health brand, Int Intimina, is promoting a cereal called Period Crunch. <laughs> 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 a new product. I'm not uncomfortable. I, we, I'm not uncomfortable at all. I'm just like, this is how insane the world is. Yeah, kids want to eat something called period crunch. <laughs> it's just like And it's probably crunch, colored little, red, too. It is. Uh, it's bright red uterus-shaped cereal no. pieces. Oh, my gosh. Look meant, at that. Meant, there it is. Meant to oh. promote... Uh, what? Con menstruation conversations at the breakfast table, because who doesn't want to talk about that while you're eating your breakfast? Uh, so <laughs> that's where you can warn your sons that they could have periods now too, because everybody mean, can have a period. No, everybody no, I mean, can get pregnant. All I say is run, Forrest, run, run, <laughs> <laughs> run, run like heck, buddy. I who I mean, wants? Who is having these conversations at the breakfast table? Who? I can tell you who. who? Can who? I tell you? Can I tell you who? <laughs> the two women who won't be with a man adopting a child, abusing a child at the breakfast table. They're the people that will feed a child this crap. I I'm mean, so this is really funny. The, the the company, I think they were shocked to hear uh, they were doing polling. They found, oh my gosh, shocking information. They found that. 77% of respondents have never discussed periods at the kitchen table. <laughs> what? Can While you believe they're eating? It? Yes. That is hard to believe. Wow. Hard so they believe. said they are aiming to normalize and increase the visibility of wow. menstrual well being, whatever the hell that is. You know what? How you fix this? I'm sorry, Sarah. I got to do this. I'm sorry, Steve. Sorry, Network. <laughs> this is how you do this. You take a couple boys and say, boys, we're gonna walk you through the girls' bathroom when there's no girls in there. And we just want you to smell, okay? Oh, no. You'll vomit. Oh, man. At the breakfast table. <laughs> you will vomit. They will go, I'm not ever no. buying that cereal again. Mom, if you buy that cereal, no. throwing it in the trash. No. Teach your young boys today to <laughs> run, forest, no. run. Girls have cooties, run. I, I, so oddly, I feel like I should bring up the swear jar, but technically, you, you didn't, I did not you didn't swear. swear. You didn't swear. Somehow it was worse though. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs>